All right, so I suppose I haven't given you all an update on the line in a while, but that's because it's been uh, been finishing. <laughs> I checked it probably, I think, four months ago, and it was pretty well stabilized. So at that time, I went ahead and threw in some Camden tablets just to go ahead and make sure that it was all killed off and sanitized, and then I let it settle in the closet for about four months. And in doing that, I got uh, you know, all my nice sludge there on the bottom. Um, and that will just all dump out. But as I was racking this into all the bottles, I also recovered my gallon jug here, the half full. And that was what I started uh, when I first started the siphon. And then when I, right at the end of the siphon too, it sucked up all this uh, debris. And you can already see stuff settling out in the bottom. So I'll let that settle again for a couple months if that's what it takes. And then I'll try to pull another, you know, I think at least one, if not two, bottles off there. But Anyway, this corker I'm using, um, I don't really even know what what brand it is. It says it was made in Italy, so it ought to be good. Uh, but I bought it through um, Northern Brewer, and it's a standard floor corker. Uh, it's nothing fancy, but it works. It gets the job done. So let me get my <coughs> camera set up here, and I'll show you guys how I use it. All right, so the way these floor corkers are designed course is that you have to use them on the floor. If you try to do it up on the counter, they get a little, uh, they can get a little klutzy on you and you might knock your bottle over. So you're really best to do it on the floor. I don't know that using your feet is what you're supposed to do. That's what I do and it works well. So we're going to take our corker here, draw it up, and put, our, put the cork in. You can shove it down in a little bit if you want just to kind of help if it makes you feel better. Uh, but then we're just going to set it on top and try to stay as square as you can, vertical, and then just real easy down. And there's that steel plunger inside, start driving your cork down. Now, make sure you're comfortable. And then just real slow and steady down, and I think y'all can see it. See the cork actually start driving into the bottle? And when it goes, you see that break over, and you're in. You're done. So we'll just set that one aside real quick. Grab another one off the counter. I'll do another one just so you guys get another good view. This little deal here on me for some reason popped out. It's got this piece threads in, which I can't thread it out now, but it threads in. <laughs> it actually popped out twice. My wife was trying to do it first. I've never seen it do that before, but I don't know why it threads in. I think so you can swap it out and put in different um, different sizes for different throats on different bottles. Um, but it, it's almost like a fail safe because it popped out twice versus us breaking a bottle or breaking the corker. It was threaded back in. But anyway, check it, make sure it's tight. Another cork, load it in. The process repeats. So you know this, like I said, this this is not uh, commercial grade, but it certainly works well for a hobbyist level. Easy down. And actually, I'm going to reset a little bit on this one because the plunger inside will kind of wobble around. And you end up with, a, as you see on this bottle here, the cork is not level. You get this little lip over here, but who cares? You know, I've done this for personal consumption or <laughs> give away to friends and family. So anyway, I won't bore you all watching anymore. i got about a half a dozen more to do here, and uh, we'll get it all cleaned up. So there it is. We've got um, 12 fifths, which this is a three gallon batch, so the max I'm going to be able to get logically would be 15 fifths. Um, well, 750 milliliters is pretty close. I don't know what the actual calculation is milliliters versus gallons, but uh, I think it's pretty close. Um, I call them a fifth. So if there's a dozen fifths, and I've got my jug over here that when it settles, I'll get at least one, if not two more out. That's pretty good. That's pretty efficient. Um, you know, I mentioned I made a three-gallon batch of mead too, which it's not working real well. It's it's still there. It's not rotten. Um, <laughs> but I made a few batches in the past that y'all have seen, and um, when I was making one-gallon batches, you have a lot of loss. So in a one-gallon batch, the most you're going to get is going to be four, maybe four and a half fifths. Um, just because you're, you're always going to have you know your, your sludge left in the bottom, so it makes sense 
when you want to start making more to start using, you know, three gallon, five gallon, even six gallon carboys to uh, make a bigger batch. But anyway, I'm real happy with this. It turned out, ended up 14% uh, alcohol, uh, which, you know, it's not bad. And uh, you taste it, 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 it's got a little bite to it, like alcohol. You know, it's not real sweet and fruity like strawberry, but it's definitely, it leaves you a little aftertaste, a little hint of strawberry wine, or a strawberry, you know, uh, like a good grape wine, I guess, to give you a flavor of grapes, but I don't know. I've never been a real big fan of most red wines, but anyway, fine, fine strawberry wine, and it's all mine.